Holden Scott is the Fixed Operations Director at Regal Nissan and is one of the up-and-coming new players that we are starting to see a whole lot of on social media. Uh, he's been in the industry for quite a while. He leads a very impressive organization there at Regal Nissan. And what really struck me at one of the last events uh, was Holden spoke on a panel and really his thought process and um, – you know, where he's come from and what he's doing today, I think is very impressive. So Holden Scott, welcome to the Fixed Ops Roundtable. Thanks, Ted. Thanks for having me. Excited about it. Hey, uh, we're excited about you. I um, I just saw that you ran an ultra marathon, and I had to look that up because I didn't know what an ultra marathon is, Holden. Um, you're in Georgia, but you went a long way to run that marathon. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so uh, last year I kind of decided I was going to get into more running, um, and I'm one of those people I like to make big lofty goals and have something to work towards. So I signed up. I'd always wanted to go out to Utah uh, to Zion National Park, and I ended up finding that they had a 100-kilometer race, which comes out to about 62 miles. So I just went for it. I signed up for it, uh, told my wife, hey, I'm going to do this next April um, and just spent a whole year kind of training, studying, figuring out how to do it. A uh, lot of experiment and then uh, kind of had one of those things where, you know, something you've been working towards, you get to go out and accomplish and everything went went as good as it could and got to finish the race and kind of probably bit off a little bit more than I could chew because I didn't start off with anything smaller. But uh, it was an awesome time. And, you know, one of those things where it's great to see all that work come to fruition and, you know, execute on it. I like what you say there with big lofty goals. Um, you know, that really hits home uh, with me as well. Um, tell us a little bit about you, Holden. Uh, you know, what got you into the car industry, how you started, when that happened. Uh, give us a little bit of the, the backstory there. Yeah. So uh, I've been in the industry about 10 years now. I got out of the Marine Corps in 2011. I uh, came to work here at Regal. Uh, started off as kind of a dispatcher and helping book warranty and just kind of little odd and end jobs like that. I uh, did that for a few months and then ended up becoming a service advisor. I uh, was a service advisor for about two years. Um, during that time was not uh, not the best time in my career. Uh, I just had a lot of issues with being a service advisor just because you come from a structured environment like the Marine Corps and then just getting kind of thrown into the service advisor world. I pretty much had one day of training on how to write cars and then the rest of it was figured wow. out kind of. So um, I did almost probably get out of the, not probably, I did almost, I was considering seriously going back into the military, getting out of uh, the automotive field entirely because it's not just because I was bad at it. It's I was bad at it and didn't know how to get good at it. Um, Luckily, I ended up being able to move to the parts department, um, worked my way up in the parts department, ended up becoming the assistant parts manager. Then I kind of was like, hey, I want to learn more about the business. So I actually started selling cars. Uh, so selling new and used cars, ended up becoming like an assistant used car manager, and then was sent to the NADA Academy. Um, so then I was doing like a lot of different, wearing a lot of different hats, helping out in different departments, things like that, kind of just odd in type things. And then one day coming into work, our service manager who had been here for like 20 years just came in unannounced and said he was going to start his own shop. Um, didn't even want to tell anybody bye. So I, they asked me to start running service for a little bit um, until they could find a replacement. And after about two weeks, you know, because at first I was like, man, you know, I know a little bit about service, but you get that feeling again of I sucked at a, as being a service advisor. How could I run a service department? But after about two weeks, you know, I kind of started getting a little bit of confidence of, hey, you know, I have been in this automotive field for eight years, graduated the NAD Academy. I know what numbers should be. So then I kind of just walked in and told them, hey, I, I want the job. Um, and I think that's what they were kind of waiting for was for me to say, hey, I want this job, actually. Um, so they ended up giving me the job and going on uh, October 2019 is when I took over. So this year will be my third year of running the fixed ops department over here. Wow. And Holden, uh, thank you for your service. Um, let me go back a little bit. What prompted you in the first place to want to get into the car business? What, what, why did you, why did you pick automotive? Well, I mean, my family's always, always been on automotive. So it's just one of those things where it just, it works. Um, and 
I was really wanting to maybe re up in the Marine Corps and it just didn't work out. Uh, I've been deployed for three years, pretty much straight. Um, so I'd only seen my wife for three months of the first three years. So she wasn't too keen on me re upping. So, uh, you know, my family's always been in automotive. So Regal Nissan, just a good fit. Um, I think probably if you ask any good uh, retail automotive person that at one point in their career, they wanted to quit. Right. And they wanted to, you know, because I give you a lot of credit because you knew there was potentially something better and more information that you didn't have. Let's talk a about that a little bit, because I've heard you do some really unique things there at uh, Regal Nissan in terms of going back to the culture of the dealership and your people. Um, you know, talk to us a little bit about that. What are some of those things uh, I've heard that you've got, uh, you know, you've got games, you've got incentives, you've got a lot of things for your people that are kind of out of the box, you know, historically as the car business goes. Yeah. I mean, if I'm honest, I picked a lot of it up maybe from the sales side, selling cars. Uh, you know, we did have some creative sales managers who, you know, pl played games. It wasn't all the time, but you're always doing spiffs and competitions like that on the sales side. So when I started running service, I'd always been told, you know, you shouldn't spiff someone or, you know, pay someone extra to do their job. But like, hey, if we're doing it on sales and it, it makes things fun. Um, so I started doing it on the service side. You know, I have spent probably too much money and spent maybe too much time creating crazy games. Um, but I mean, if you're just looking for something simple, it's as easy as buying a Jenga, a Jenga tower and writing just points on the Jenga tower and having, Hey, if we sell, you know, any of these items, you come and you pull a Jenga piece and you keep building the tower. It starts getting pretty crazy at the end of the day, as people are trying to get points. Um, Plinko is another one that's been, you know, really, really fun. I did that with our technicians you'd be surprised. I bought a Plinko board that made the sounds and everything, the lights, and you'd have guys come in to do their drops and yeah. they'd ask, are you not going to turn it on? I want to hear the music. You know, 40 <laughs> year old guys who are like, you're not going to turn the music on. I want the music. I want, I want to hear the sound effects. So uh, that's fun. Uh, we play battleship. We played games with Nerf guns. Uh, you name it. I've probably come up with a way or thought about doing it. Um, so yeah, it's just something to me, it makes work fun. Um, it's a way to make a little bit of extra money for the guys. But then realistically, the biggest thing about it is it's getting people kind of that gratification. You know, it's not just the fact that I get to come have a little bit of fun playing Jenga Tower. It's a little pause in the day where maybe I get to, but I, I as a manager get to interact with those guys. And then them, I think even if there wasn't a reward, a monetary reward, or sometimes we do different prizes, they still would be excited about playing it because they're getting just those little data boys during the day. They're getting it to brag a little bit. Um, hey, I, I just sold another set of brakes. Hey, I just sold another set of brakes. Um, and it starts building that momentum, building that excitement, building that confidence to people. And I think that's really big. Um, you know, to me, that's one thing that's super important is, you know, people getting the recognition they deserve and then just feeling good about themselves. Um, one thing I always like to think of is I always try to picture my people driving home on the drive home from work. And not that I do things because I want them to feel a certain way, but I never want my people driving home and just being mad about their day. You know, that whenever I make decisions or things like that, I always think of my people driving home. I want them in a good mood going home to their families. You know, I don't want to be the cause of, you know, family stress or anything else. I want them walking in the door. They had a good day at work. Um, not, maybe I'm not as happy about seeing my kids or things like that because I had a bad day at work. Ultimately, some of those things are on those people individually. I'm not saying I'm always fully responsible for everything, but if I can help make someone's day, help make someone's family life um, better, that's a win to me. And you told me a while back, Holden, that um, some of that comes from when uh, you were working uh, maybe without as much direction, without, you know, a lot of the incentives, a lot of the focus on those things. And you had to take that drive home. And, uh, you know, you had a lot of those thoughts in your mind, you know, about getting out of the business and going and doing something else. You know, talk to us a little bit about that. You know, why? Um, and, and by the way, you, you don't have a small store. How, how many technicians and how many advisors do you have? So I have eight advisors. I have 27 technicians that work for me. Um, so yeah, it is a, I mean, I'm not the biggest store, but you know, here in Metro Atlanta, we're a pretty big uh, Nissan store. We write 
uh, a lot of ROs. And yeah, it does, it does come back. Um, you know, a lot of it is stuff I reflect back on myself, um, uh, being that guy just out of the Marine Corps, you know, I wasn't, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm the most successful guy in the military, but I had a good successful, uh, career in the Marine Corps. I really liked it. I was very successful, uh, promoted and things like that. And then you go from that to, you know, being a service advisor where I thought, Hey, I could do this. This is, you know, it's not that hard. Um, and just falling flat on my face with it. Um, obviously some of that comes back on me. I, I obviously could have done better, but I went from an environment where I was always led and kind of given a path and a career, like, Hey, if you want to be better, you got, I knew exactly what I needed to do in the Marine Corps to be better. I need, I knew I, what I needed to shoot. I knew I, what I needed to run. I knew how many pull-ups I needed to do. I knew all those things. I could tell you exactly what I needed to do to move to the next level. And then you come into an environment where I had no idea. Uh, yeah, I need to sell more. Well, how do I do that? Like, what should I focus on? What's what's the low hanging fruit, the things I should, you know, get better at first? And yeah, I mean, I, I turned to drinking. I was drinking heavily. I was not a happy person. And I was pretty much miserable every day driving home. And I remember telling my wife, like, I, I just suck and I don't know how to get better. And I feel like I'm failing. And so I'm going to go back to the thing I was good at. So I do reflect back on that because I never want people to be there because it, it wasn't just professional. It was creeping into my personal life and everywhere. Um, that's, that's what's so important to me is, you know, making people better people professionally and personally. Do you have any mentors, people you've looked up to in your life and, you know, that you could, uh, you know, you could point to some of them as well? I mean, definitely. I mean, my dad, um, you know, he was in the Marine Corps. He, he uh, had, you know, a lot of this, we kind of followed the same career path of uh, not being successful in college, joining the Marine Corps because we thought we knew more than our parents. Um, so he's definitely one of them. And, and if I'm honest, this isn't to like try to toot my own horn or anything like that. As far as that, I don't really have a lot of other mentors. You know, I'm trying to find like-minded people. But for me, a lot of it just comes from reading. I'm a very avid reader. Yeah. So to me, I just have conversations with people that are long since passed and trying to pull different things. I'm probably, you know, I get it commented all the time from vendors. I'm probably the only service manager that has philosophy books on his desk. You know, I have Plato, Marcus Aurelius, guys like that on my desk as a constant reminder to myself and because I do pick them up and read them. So not only is it living people that I might be interacting with, but it's also reading. I think it's one of the biggest things. Um, I, I have copies of, you know, all those books that I keep in my desk at all times. I have service advisors that are reading Marcus Aurelius meditations. I've given wow. out, I can tell you how many copies of that book of, uh, Jocko Willink's extreme ownership books like that. So I try to encourage my people to read as well. So that's probably the next biggest impact on me. And it has nothing to do with the business. It's just being a better person and trying to pass those lessons on. Well, I, th I think it has a lot to do, of course, you know, with life. And I think that if we put good information inside our heads, right, if we feed our heads with the positive stuff, and like you just said, you've got service advisors and employees who want to read that information and they want to learn more, you are in turn passing it along as well to others. Um, a lot of folks watching this, Holden, are, you know, general managers, fixed ops directors, service parts managers, dealers, technicians. Um, what advice would you have for them, you know, in their careers, you know, in terms of, you know, improving themselves and getting better and, you know, achieving more, going up that next notch, you know, going for the next thing. What advice would you have for our, you know, for our audience? I think probably the biggest thing I'd say is you got to control what you can control. Um, you can, and that's a lot to do with your mindset. Um, to me, I think a lot of times we get bogged down with things we can't control, things that are outside of our control. So every day when I'm when I'm at work, I look at what you know, what's the things I can control. And a lot of that just comes down to my mindset, and my attitude and how I treat other people. You know, a lot of things can go wrong, but I can always choose to have a good attitude about it. And I can always choose how I treat people. If you ask my people some of my favorite quotes, they give you some, but one I know that they'd give you uh, that I say all the time is be tolerant of others and strict with yourself. And that just comes from Marcus Aurelius, not me. Um, but I always tell people that, you know, hey, when someone makes a mistake, you know, realize, hey, people are human. They're going to make mistakes. But what if all of us were wor working to be just strict with ourselves and continue to improve and realize what we can improve? 
than intolerant of others, you know, it's going those people are going to fix themselves. If you can get an entire organization being strict on themselves, then all of a sudden you don't have to be as tolerant of other people's mistakes and stuff. Cause if everyone's strict with themselves. Those mistakes start to diminish. So to me, it's, it's all about that. that's what it's all about is you know controlling what i can control and you know it doesn't cost anything to be a good person and work together and you know just strive as a complete organization to everyone get better both professionally and personally last question for today holden what's ahead for you um what do you see for yourself in the future you know down the road um you know what's 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 the next step for you what do you you know what do you want to achieve where do you want to go next uh, I mean, the next step for me is probably I want I want to become uh, executive manager eventually here. Um, so right now, what does that mean for me? As crazy as it sounds, and I know some people are against this, they want to, you know, control everything that they can. For me right now, the next step is training my replacement. Um, I'm actively looking for guys um, that want to learn, guys and girls that want to learn and want to eventually take over for me. I'm trying to pass on as much knowledge and information as I can to as many people as I can. Because at the end of the day, there's only going to be one person for that seat. But if I can, you know, help other people down that career path, they're going to be better employees for Regal Nissan. And then hopefully they eventually uh, become better people themselves. So for me right now, it's training my replacement and then down the road, uh, eventually become an executive manager. Holden, we, uh, we appreciate your time today and hearing from you. Uh, you are one of the up and coming leaders in our industry. And uh, I'm going to invite you back on the round table. Uh, you've been a, a great addition on a couple different panels. We've had this event and last and uh, you know, congratulations, hold on all the success that you are having uh, in changing the mindset and uh, starting with your own there at, uh, at Regal Nissan. No, I, I appreciate it, Ted. Appreciate everything y'all do because it gives me, a way to connect and get ideas from people I probably would never ever connect with otherwise. So um, I'm one of those people. If I see a good idea, you know, I'm going to steal it and use it. Yep. Uh, Holden Scott, everybody, his contact information is at the bottom here in the ticker. If you want to reach out to him, he's the fixed operations director at Regal Nissan in Georgia. Uh, Holden, thank you again. Uh, Holden Scott here today at the fixed ops round table.